Welcome back to another video in our starter series. So far, all the free characters we've covered are earned as you play the game, either by completing quests, increasing adventure rank, or wishing on a guaranteed starter banner. But Shang Ling is different in that you will have to put your skills to the test in the Spiral Abyss in order to add her to your party. If you've been exclusively making use of the free characters thus far, and you've just reached AR20 and wish to add Shang Ling to your roster as quickly as possible, you'll need to make sure your characters are at least level 4 and your crowd work is fairly competent, because the third floor will truly pose itself as a roadblock for any new travelers that come unprepared. If you look at Xiang Ling from the standpoint of someone who likes to play optimally, the shorthand advice is to fully invest in her burst and use any set and weapon combinations that lean into doing so. Her fourth constellation is her best one, and her sixth one is great if you have it, but not required. With all that out of the way, let's get more in depth. Xiang Ling's elemental burst is called the Pyronado. Upon cast, Xiang Ling will perform three swings of pyro damage before actually summoning the Pyronado itself. At this point, the Pyronado will circle around your active character and will carry any buffs Xiang Ling had on her even past when they stop affecting Xiang Ling herself. The reason why Xiang Ling's burst is held in such high acclaim is because every instance of pyro damage also applies pyro aura. That's a lot of reaction potential. To make that potential even stronger, Xiang Ling's fourth constellation increases the length of her burst by 4 seconds, increasing her uptime from 50% to 70. At constellation 6, Xiang Ling grants all party members an additional 15% of pyro damage bonus whenever her pyronado is active on the field. This is great for mono pyro, but in reaction based teams, this constellation is more so for her own benefit than anyone else's. For Xiang Ling, the best artifact sets to give her for this style of play are generally a hybrid of Noblesse and Crimson Witch of Flames, or the full Severed Fate set. Typically, another character in her team would make use of the full Noblesse set, but if you have no one else, Xiang Ling can act as your party buffer instead. Xiang Ling's burst cost is fairly high though, so the benefits of using the Severed Fate set is that fulfilling her energy requirements turns into extra damage. You'll likely need an energy recharge sands and a crit circlet, but your goblet depends on which set and weapon combination you are using. If you're using Severed Fates, you can likely get away with an attack goblet, but with any other set, it's more optimal to follow the typical crit formula and use a pyro goblet. For weapons, Xiang Ling has a pretty exhaustive list of options. The ongoing meme is pretty much every polearm in the game is another weapon for Xiang Ling. Her diversity with weapons outpaces even Kaya at this point. So to make things simplest on ourselves, we'll mention the top picks. Dragon's Bane is a really solid pick for those that have their energy sorted. The Mastery substat combined with a passive makes Shang Ling Melt very powerful. It can be quite handy for Burgeon too. Favonius Lance is your typical energy cleanup weapon. Just make sure she's on the field to trigger its passive. Crit Rate can be increased with the Battle Pass, Death Match, or the White Tassel, a polearm you can find in chests around Liyue. Sadly, the crit damage Black Cliff pole from the Paimon shop isn't as good a candidate for her beyond its substat. This is because the passive that grants attack doesn't trigger until you defeat enemies, and the Pyronado, her largest source of damage, doesn't benefit from stat improvements after cast. Her best free-to-play option would likely be the Catch. It provides energy recharge, and its passive improves the damage and crit rate of your elemental burst. If no one else is using it, this is a very solid option for Xiang Ling. And for those of you that have it and would like to spoil Sheng Ling at the expense of making an Archon cry, you can always give her the Engulfing Lightning. The Engulfing Lightning ensures that any investment in energy recharge is paid forward with an attack buff. So if you've got this weapon, you can likely change that attack goblet in your Severed Fate set back to Pyro. Its services will no longer be required. Of the weapons above, only the last two are limited in their availability. The Engulfing Lightning for obvious reasons of being a limited series weapon, and the catch is only accessible after arriving in Inazuma and catching a large assortment of fish, and one of them is a very special kind of fish, only found in one of the worst places imaginable. So for early AR, the first four mentions will make do. As for early game sets, focus on energy recharge. Exile and Scholar combinations are very much appreciated. Even the use of Berserker has its place if you want to experiment a little. Now with the obligatory discussion of Xiang Ling's burst out of the way, the remainder of this video will talk about other aspects of Xiang Ling's utility. So let's talk about Guoba. Xiang Ling's elemental skill summons the stove guy. I mean, a cute panda-like creature named Guoba. And he carries all of Xiang Ling's current stats for the duration of his stay. Guoba carries a red hot chili pepper on him that he periodically takes a bite from before scorching the enemy with a cone shaped fire blast in front of him. This fire blast gains an extended reach after reaching Xiang Ling's first ascension passive. 
This blast happens a total of four times and each instance deals pyro damage as well as applies pyro aura. Provided Guoba hits an enemy each time, he will provide a total of four energy particles for Shangling. It's not bad, but it happens over a rather extended period of time. Still, Guoba acts as a source of off-field damage, and he has a few fun interactions with any animal units you may have as well. The most prominent of which is that he can be carried away by the Traveler's Elemental Burst and create a fiery tornado. So while Guoba on his own isn't a hefty surge of damage, he does have some damage utility. With Shangling's first cancellation, enemies hit by Guoba's fire breath have their pyro resistance lowered by 15%. This is a great boon for the entire team's pyro damage, and the damage boost would well outpace a generic damage bonus with the same written percentage. Of course, it has a greater, more noticeable effect against single targets as opposed to large mobs of enemies. After reaching Shangling's fourth ascension, when Guoba has had his fill, he leaves behind a chili pepper that can be picked up from the field. Doing so will provide a personal buff of 10% attack for that particular character. A rather nice parting gift if I do say so myself. With all that utility that Guoba brings, the builds for Shangling's won't change, but their damage will be improved even if you leave them at talent level 1. If you really want to break the build mold, then we'll need to cover Infused Shangling. This part of the video is reserved exclusively for anyone who prefers to go against the grain and take a leaf from Shangling's book and go rogue and experimental. This isn't to say it's not viable, but it's the lesser used part of her abilities. And I am referring, of course, to her basic attack string. I mean, physical Shangling is a thing. But if you want to embrace her basic attack talent without nerfing her pyro damage, there is a way. But it requires a path that many consider to be unnatural. This method will take a step further, a step that can never be unstepped, a step that cannot be taken back even if you scream to the heavens and offer up all your life savings, a step that cannot be taken lightly, a step so horrendous that people are cowering under desks right now at the sheer thought of even mentioning it. C6 ing Bennett. So if you don't know, Bennett creates a large ring of fire. A character that stands in it gains a flat attack buff. However, if you keep going down, down, down the constellation activation chain, his sixth one turns all basic attack damage into pyro, and that can mess with physical damage dealers in any unit that relies on self-infusion rather than conversion to deal their damage, and this is because of how priority works in the game. In short, this is a method for those of you who do not care about the consequences, or have already maxed Bennett's constellation previously without knowing the side effects. Again, big disclaimer, public opinion says you should not do this, and doing so is something you cannot undo. But if you are absolutely 100% certain and want to see some off-meta madness, then let's keep going. Shangling with Bennett allows every aspect of Shangling to deal pyro damage. If you want basic attack DPS, the White Tassel actually improves normal attack damage. You can combine off-field applications so Shangling can trigger Vaporize. Or you can embrace mono pyro teams and just go all in on Pyromania. We would be proud, I'm sure. You can use the same builds from before if you so desire. After all, her burst is still probably the beefiest part of her damage. But if you're thinking to yourself, no, I already see six Bennett. I'm here for off meta. Let's do this. Alrighty then. We'll need an attack percent sands, a pyro goblet, and a crit circlet. We can go full martial artist set for lower AR or combine it with either Berserker or Crimson Witch. A higher AR, we can make better use of the Gladiator's Finale. For Mono Pyro, we can go all in with Lava Walker. And for those of you that say no, basic attack damage must be higher, you can satisfy your urges with the Echoes of an Offering set. The instances of damage will be higher than that of the Gladiator's, but I do think Gladiator's has more consistency. However, Shangling's attack speed is very high. She'll likely be triggering the Echoes passive more often than not, unless her ping is also super high. If it's green, nice and clean. If it's red, Gladiators instead. With the knowledge that has been granted to you, you will be one of the few Shangling mains that actively use her combo attack, Do Fu. And for this, you will catch sight of the ever elusive second constellation, Oil Meets Fire. When an enemy is hit by the fifth strike of Shangling's basic attack combo, they are given the Iplode status. After a short period, the status will erupt and deal AoE pyro damage from the afflicted enemy. And I think that about covers Shangling, a hungry chef from Liyue who cooks up a lot of pyro application with her burst. She's the most prized team member, aside from Bennett, in what is referred to as the national lineup, and a great addition to your party whether you care about making optimal plays or just want to have fun experimenting. The ingredients to success are in your hands. Combine them as you please. 
So that's enough out of me. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. So until then, stay tuned.